always look forward to our once a month visit with Congressman Ron Paul. He's got to go in 14 minutes. I got my atomic clock to a key vote. Got to be in a committee room. So he's with us now. I'm going to move quickly. First off, Congressman, you won the straw poll at CPAC, uh, proving that most of the Republicans are not warmongering neocons. You got 84% approval rating in Texas. You won by a record 80% in the primary, showing that America supports what you're doing. Uh, can you comment on the fact that, uh, the, uh, well, your take on this? Well, I was very pleased and somewhat surprised, but it was a delight to uh, have won that uh, CPAC uh, vote. You know, what was interesting is, uh, you know, the people who oppose us, they're, they're still significant. If I get 32 percent of the vote, that means there's a large number who are still complaining, and they're part of the, the establishment. But what I thought was interesting is all the sour grapes that was expressed afterwards. They were complaining, and, oh, this is not for real, you know, like they did in the campaign. But what was interesting is somebody said that, you know, what we need to do, is uh, for CPAC to have any credibility, they have to change the way they vote. So they made a su somebody made a suggestion that nobody under 25 would be allowed to vote, which means, and you know it too, that there are a lot of young people who are interested in what we're talking about, and I think that's fortunate. You know, the next generation is not later on, but currently they're inheriting this mess. So I'm delighted to talk to young people. But this whole idea that the people who don't like us challenging the status quo say, well, let's not let them vote next time. But I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people are coming our way every year. And you know in the last two or three years that there's been tremendous growth in our movement, and that makes me uh, very encouraged. Absolutely. I want to cut to the chase here uh, and uh, before we get into the banking situation. A few months ago, you were speaking at a Campaign for Liberty event, and you threw the gauntlet down, as you did back in the 80s in some videos I've seen. You said we've had a CIA coup in America. They're bringing in the drugs. Most people don't know, in 96, the CIA uh, inspector general before Congress admitted that. Uh, but it's wider than that. We know Wall Street and the banking cartel, the Federal Reserve System, through Yale and other outfits, set up the OSS and CIA. And you came right out and basically said, this is our illegitimate government. And that ties into the banks engineering the financial collapse, now saying they're getting ready for an even bigger collapse sometime this year in a constitution of the world run by the banks, uh, yeah. as Gordon Brown and others called for. Can you specifically speak to who runs the coup, who they are, and how we remove them? Because by openly coming out and really telling it like it is, we can, we can cut to the chase. Well, I have trouble naming names because I don't know all the names, but uh, the one thing I can verify is that the people who should have responsibility for our national security and intelligence gathering, uh, the U.S. Congress, they have no idea what's going on, and, and that's the real problem. And uh, it, it, it fits together, you know, the secrecy of the of the uh, CIA as well as the secrecy of the Fed. They control the money and they control secret government. People have referred to the CIA as a secret army for the president, but sometimes I wonder whether the presidents even have total control of the CIA as well, as many stories have been written about that. So it's... Um it's something that uh, I think the American people have to realize. Uh, we do know there's been evidence, uh, you know, brought forth that the uh, CIA actually can own banks. And uh, there's been fairly strong evidence that uh, the CIA has been involved in drug dealing. As, uh, you know, there are times when I think the war in Afghanistan, we say it has to do with pipes and oil, a uh, gas pipeline and oil and, and other commercial things. But there are, the other commercial thing may be the drug trade, maybe... Uh, Maybe the CIA is in competition with the drug dealers over there because there's a lot of self-financing in these uh, organizations. But I, I don't take the position that I know all those answers, and I don't know everything that the Fed does. But the one, the, my approach is that we uh, people, the people deserve it, and the Congress has a responsibility to find out what they're doing. And if they're not doing it, fine and dandy, we'll clear the air. But if they are doing it, it will give us more ammunition for the reason why we need a different monetary system and we need to have a different system of collecting intelligence because they can tell us anything. Remember how we went to war in Iraq? The CIA was very much involved up there. Say the CIA, oh, they have weapons of mass destruction. They're about to attack us. And it was based on false information. And this is, this is what disturbs me the most, and that's why I want much, much more uh, you know, transparency of what our government is doing.
Well, those were strong statements you made a few months ago, and you just echoed them. But, but, but specifically, Congress, as you know, has had hearings in the 70s about the shadow government, continuity of government. Uh, the Homeland Security Committee in the House has not been allowed to see the full text of PDD-51. Uh, we know we've seen a 12-fold in the last eight-year increase in opium out of Afghanistan. Uh, we know that two years ago, a CIA aircraft that had been used for torture flights crashed in Mexico with pure cocaine, three and a half tons, meaning coming directly from the source uncut. Uh, I mean, this is just comes out in Mena, Arkansas, over and over again. And uh, so when you talk about a coup over America, uh, how do we ever ferret this out and remove it? I mean, do we start as you've been calling for, an audit of the private Federal Reserve? Yeah, it won't happen until the people become really outraged. They are growing in their outrage, but it has to translate into different ideas and different respect for the Constitution, different people up here, and we're in the midst of this transition, and as the crisis worsens, you know, the real challenge is, is will, will we end up with a dictatorship, or are we going to have people who are demanding, you know, a republic and open government, and, uh, and that might take another 10, 15 years to determine. But in the midst of a crisis, it's the worst time to present our views. So that's why uh, we, we have to do our best to get as many people to agree with us as possible so that in the rebuilding that we have some ideas about what the monetary system should be like and what our foreign policy ought to be like, which means that if we had a proper foreign policy, the, uh, the incentive to have this uh, uh, CIA excuse, making excuses for knowing everything about us and everything that's going on in the world, that would all change. They were, they were, I don't believe that we shouldn't have some intelligence gathering. But I don't like these clandestine uh, uh, operations and killings and things that we've known to have happened.